Hi, everyone. Ali Mahmood with Snow Software. And joining me again is Colin Jack, our Global Solutions Consultant for Cloud Management. In this video, we want to talk all about automation and orchestration in your hybrid cloud infrastructure. So when we talk about automation and orchestration, we have to first talk about the way things are today. And what we see in a lot of environments are manual processes. End users are requesting things manually via emails and IT tickets. We see IT having to manually approve to see if people have budgets and access to these environments. Then we see IT actually going and manually deploying and manually doing the work of provisioning and change requests. Where automation and orchestration come into play is first streamlining the request process. So if we can give users a fully functional self-service portal, and that means it's role-based, um, people are only allowed to see what they're allowed to see. It has budgets and governance baked into it, so they're only allowed to request these types of resources. They have to stay under budget. By the time a request gets to IT, we know that the person is allowed to have those resources, and we know that they have the budget necessary to provision those resources. Then we get into automation. So integrating all of your best-in-class tools that you have today, building out policies and end-to-end -end workflows has never been easier than you're gonna see in Snow Commander. I'm gonna hand things over to Colin, who's gonna take us through the portal, um, take us through automation workflows, and show how easy it is to build out your end-to-end -end automation in your cloud infrastructure. Colin? Thanks, Ali. What I'm gonna show you here is a service catalog that's been customized for the engineering department. These are all the services across both public and private cloud that are uh, set up for engineering to consume. So I'm going to pick an Apache Tomcat server. This blueprint has been designed to be a multi-cloud template. So it can de be deployed across many different environments. So AWS, Azure, as well as some on-prem locations. In the form, I've also got the ability to put certain data that's gonna be used either in the workflow engine uh, or just metadata that's gonna be tagged uh, for this service. So the first thing is time zones. So I'm in the Eastern time zone. Uh, what this can do is this can trigger power schedule groups. So I can make sure that this machine is only powered on Monday to Friday, nine to five. If I require backup on this machine, uh, which I don't, we'll say no, and I don't require any DR on this machine. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna deploy this into my AWS region because that's the cheapest location for me. And we'll just hit next here. Since we're going into AWS, I'm gonna be uh, offered a couple different AWS instance sizes. From here, I can pick the different instance sizes and I can see that cost change as well. So I wanna be cost aware, so I'm gonna keep this as a T2 Nano, storage is fine, I'm happy with that. Now I can go ahead and I can submit the request. So as an end user now, I'm going ahead, I'm provisioning this workload into the cloud. You can see that it's going out for approval right now. It's passed its automated approval. Now it's in provisioning, so we're gonna see that workload show up uh, in a matter of minutes. While that's provisioning, I wanna quickly show you what's involved in setting up a blueprint for the service catalog. So we're gonna change back over to the admin interface of Commander, and we'll go into self-service. And we'll find that Apache Tomcat blueprint here, and we'll go ahead and we'll edit this. When we define the blueprints, we're gonna give it a name that my users would understand, so people in the engineering department know what version of Tomcat they're gonna to be deployed. They're familiar with the icon, so we'll put that in there too. And next, we're gonna define what are the components. So this is made up of a multi-cloud template, which is a template consisting of AWS, Azure, as well as on-prem uh, versions of that Tomcat server. And then we get into the configuration. So for the configuration, we have to come up with things like naming conventions, and we've got a full editor to be able to build out those naming conventions, so we can see what that, that's gonna be. And very easy, kind of click around here and I can add in variables if I wanna put those into the naming conventions. There's also a full workflow engine. So when I made the request, we saw the approval. So there's an approval workflow, there's the provisioning, and then there's also a completion workflow or a post provisioning workflow. And if I take a look at this workflow, this is gonna be all the steps we're gonna do after this has been provisioned. So to install Apache Tomcat, I'm actually doing this through Ansible. 
I'm gonna, first step is I've got a REST call here where I'm gonna pull an Ansible playbook. I'm gonna execute that Ansible playbook. Then I've got a number of other steps here around installing a Dynatrace agent for monitoring. I'm adding it to DR if that was selected, which I didn't, so that's not gonna happen. Um, I'm using, using ServiceNow as my ITSM solution. So I'm closing the ticket that was created for this. I'm updating the CMDB. And in here, you can see I'm also setting the power schedule group and maintenance group based on that time zone that I filled out. I can set expiry dates in here. As well, I'm gonna send a, an update to the Teams group for engineering to let them know that this resource has, has finished completed. So that's all a bunch of the different things that we can do in the workflow engine. If we go back into the blueprint of the service here, we've also got the ability to define what the default resources are across the different platforms that we're provisioning into, as well as with the form, this is where I can control what the user can select. So I let the user pick between a T2 nano, micro, T2 large, and a 2X large. But there are a lot of other choices here that I could give them, but I know that these come with a hefty price tag. And so I don't even wanna make that an option for the user. So in this way, we can have a nice controlled service. We can control the parameters around it, put the guardrails up, have the approval workflows in place, and have quotas in place to make sure that things aren't being over-provisioned, the manager still has visibility of what's being consumed and has great control over that. Back to you, Ali. Thanks for that, Colin. I think you saw just how easy a request and a provisioning process can be, regardless of where you're trying to build your environment. It could be on-premise, could be single cloud, could be multi-cloud. Now, process change can be hard at some companies, but it doesn't have to be. We've seen a very easy to use self-service portal. It's contextual to each user, so it lets them do everything that they want while keeping the company safe. So it's governance baked into a portal, and that's the best practice that you want to enforce. We saw integrations to numerous different tools that you're using, your backup. We have application performance monitoring integrations, all sorts of the integrations you need for your infrastructure environment. And yes, we showed a lot of the portal, but you can actually enforce and access the system all through an API. So you could even use your current ITSM portal to request all of these resources to be deployed. So we think that automation and orchestration of your environment from an end-to-end -end perspective can be done. It can be straightforward. I know that for some of our current customers, uh, for example, we have an enterprise electronics manufacturing company, and their average provisioning time used to be two weeks. With Commander, they were able to reduce it down to one hour. So end users um, used to wait two weeks just to get a simple server to get their job done. Now they get it in one hour. The company is more agile. People get what they need much faster. And I know that in another video, I referenced a Fortune 1000 retailer that saved a lot of money in their environment, but they were also able to automate and solve a lot of their provisioning challenges they were able to reduce a five-day average provisioning down to five minutes. And we think that's the power of automation. You saw Colin submit a request. It went into uh, in progress and then automatically get approved just like that. We think that this can be done. It can be easy. So when it comes to end-to-end -to -end automation or orchestration of your infrastructure, Snow is here to help. Yes, we have this great platform, but we also have super talented people like Colin to help you get started with doing your cloud automation. We know that we have big customers that are seeing a lot of success, and we believe that you can transform how you're delivering infrastructure resources to your end users. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can go to snowsoftware.com, or you can contact your Snow Sales representative. And we wish you luck in this.